You know, we've known for a defensive team, and I, we tried to throw every kind of defense at them, and I, you know, just couldn't. We had we had a difficult time stopping them from scoring, but you know, we just kind of kept playing, keep playing, and uh, we're able to create some turnovers. I don't have a stats. I didn't look at the stats sheet, but we must have had them turn it over ball a lot, and that created some offense, uh, especially early on. And then at the end, you know, we're just trying to uh, slow them down. You know, it's, uh, it, we're at a point where we were playing some pretty good defense. We just got to get back to that. Uh, our kids played extremely hard, and I thought, uh, you know, it's, it's what it's what our mo is. You know, we we, we play hard. We, you know, we, we go after 50-50 balls. We rebound. We do all those things. So I'm proud of the, the kids and the way they played. And you know, we just got to keep getting better on, on on both sides of the ball. But uh, you know, good win. Uh, ULM did a great job. I like how hard they play, and you know how how hard they fought. So uh, you know, kudos to them. Questions for the student athletes. Daryl, I'll hold uh, Courtney up here. Daryl Williams with a question. I just wanted to uh, ask Simone, uh, you scored 11 points in the third quarter and four in the first uh, half of the fourth quarter. Was there a change in strategy uh, as to why you were able to be way, you know, more effective in the third and in the second half as on the whole? Um, I don't think I was that focused coming in, in the first half, and I was missing easy layups that I know I should have made. The second half, I just know I have to come harder and make layups. Um, Nakia, you, you know, you seemed like you were pretty, you know, you played well throughout. You know, more consistent is the word I was looking for. Uh, just talk about, uh, uh, you know, you guys in the fourth quarter, that, that great start you had. Um, coming out of the time, my coach already said it's, gonna, it's the last 10 minutes, so we're going to have to fight to win. And so what I told them is those first three minutes of that fourth quarter is very important. We have to get after it. And so what we did from there is just turn up the intensity on defense, and we turned the whole game around. Simone, in the in the fourth quarter, uh, y'all had a stretch where 10 straight points inside. I think you had the first four. Did you feel like you're just kind of wearing them down a little bit late? Um, yeah, and I knew 34 was getting a lot of foul calls, so I was just taking it to her, trying to get out of the game, and that's what happened. Nikia, you had one possession there where you basically dribbled out the clock. How big was that to to get some off off of it uh, late there? Uh, I know I can control tempo by having the ball in my hands, and my teammates trusted me to have the ball, so I was just confident enough to, you know, take care of the ball and get it to Simone. She had a wide open layup. She missed it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm not mad at it. We got the ball back, I believe, on that possession. So um, I guess I, my teammates had to trust in me, and I, I just did what I needed to do for our team. And and Nakia, early, um, you all started, I think, 0 for 9 from the field. To hit that three, how much of an icebreaker was that for you guys to get back into it early there? Uh, we were just trying to stay, you know, in, in tune with the game. Because you know you're going to, what comes with the game is missed shots, missed layups. Uh, we just had to, you know, I had to calm everybody down because I'm the person that they come to. So uh, just calm everybody down, let them know that this game is nowhere near over with. So we just kept playing hard and we came out with the win today. Questions for Simone? Yes, I want to ask Coach. Well, oh, no, I, can, I can ask Simone. Sure. sure. Uh, the two games against uh, Texas State, they beat you guys by 20, and then you beat those guys by 17. Talk about those two games, the difference in them, and how you feel would be the key going to the against them. The first game at Texas State was one of our worst games defensively, and the second game we came out on defense, top number one on the lane line drives, and we controlled the tempo of that game, and that's how we came out with the win. So I think that's what we have. Coming into this next game. Questions? Oh. Sure, go ahead. After the way things ended in the regular season for you with that, that tough shot late, to get a win like this coming out of the gate, how, how do you think it can kind of carry you through the rest of the tournament? Just getting the confidence back after after what happened the other night? For, for both of y'all. Um, regular season is over with. So we put that past us. Now we're taking it one game at a time, and we're on to Texas State. So now it's time for us to focus and get on to Texas State. Any more questions for Simone or, or Nakia? Ladies, thank you for your time. We'll see you Thursday. Thank you. We will continue with more questions for Coach Broadhead. If you have a question, please raise your hand, and we, we will get a microphone to you. Thank you.
Carrie, I'm not sure what you got the sheet there. I'm not sure what the percentage was in the in the fourth quarter for field goal percentage, but uh, you guys went Adam strong late. Same question as I asked Simone. Do you feel like you just kind of warmed down a little bit inside late? Yeah. There's no doubt. You know, she's right. You know, at the beginning of the game, going 0 for 9, I thought we had some good looks underneath the goal. We were just a little cold, I think, maybe a little bit tight. But we missed a lot of little chip shots in the early part of the game, and we got those same shots in the fourth quarter, third and fourth quarter, and we were able to, you know, to utilize that inside presence that Simone brings. You know, I think we talked to the kids about let's don't force threes. I, mean, I, I know we made a little run the first half shooting threes, but you know we didn't want to hang our hat on it. We wanted to make sure we got some touches inside. So. By getting her some touches, because we—I mean, Simone will start making shots. She usually shoots 65 percent from the field, you know. So uh, she did that in the fourth quarter, and I think that was a big, big part of us making it all run. It wasn't—it wasn't just Nakia that hit that three early. Swain came back with the two quick ones. How much did that open things up yeah, for I, you? I think it did. You know, when you open nine and you're struggling to find something, and you know, you start hitting some shots, and then we pressing and creating turnovers. I know Simone made a big steal at half for us to hit, try to hit another three, and I think that got us going. And, uh, you know, all those things are important, especially when you, you kind of starting kind of slow, you know, and it got us going. And, um, you know, it's just kind of what we play like. You know, it's like sometimes our backs against the wall, and that's when we kind of step up and play a little bit harder. Swain had one shot late with, I think, 14 seconds left on the shot clock in the left corner, and then I think it was the very next possession where Nakia just dribbled it out. How, how big was that? Yeah, you know, we try to teach them, you know, to look at the score and, to, you know, kind of, you know, take control of the ball and all that. Nakia's real smart. I mean, she's a smart player. That's one of the things that uh, I like having the ball in her hands a lot, especially toward the end of the game. She can knock down free throws, and she's real, real smart. Darrell, you have a question? Yeah. Did you change anything defensively for the start of the fourth? Because, like I said, they started the first three quarters where they got out to leads, you know, against you guys. Yeah, we changed every minute of the game. <laughs> you know, we, 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 t what we call trapping. We call tenning ball screens. And that's what we love to do. And we, we just couldn't do it with 34 popping and hitting threes and one. So we started switching them. And then they started posting us up a little bit, and then we went to just hard hedging and getting back. And I mean, we tried everything. But at the end of the game, I thought what the big thing is, we pressed a little bit, but we, we, we call it point press. We, we took number one, we tried to take her out of the game by putting two people on her and point press her and try to get the ball out of her hands. And it, it worked for a couple of possessions, and I think those were big possessions for us. Okay. Questions for Coach Broadhead? One more over here. Um, for going forward, how much do you think maybe they lost, uh, they learned a little bit of a lesson, kind of persistence more than anything else, and just staying yeah. in it? Yeah. You know, we all have a word, you know, we all come up with a word. That's just my, you know, uh, you know, you do New Year's resolutions and you do a, you know, you come up with what you're going to do, or in a minute you give up things. For us, we're one word and we're real simple. And my word is persistence. And you're right, we are a very persistent team, and I, I, I'm a very persistent coach, and I expect a lot and all that. And you know, they show up, you know, they come in and, and do what they need to do. But, you know, it's a big win for us because now we know, you know, we played well against Texas State and we played bad against. We know that it's going to be a tough game, and, you know, it's just come out. And you, and you do, you know, as everybody said, well, what are you going to do? Is really never really worry about the opponent that much. You know, we make sure that we do what we do best, and I think that's what we got to do going into the game. That said, though, what do you think is the key to the matchup? I think the key to the matchup is going to make sure that we are able to be in help. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, our help defense had been kind of sliding, you know, been, they've been getting too many lane line drives, which is very difficult to guard. And so we need to be able to step in, in, in help over. We're last in the country in block shots, but probably first in the country in charges. And we got to be able to get in a position to be able to take those charges and, and, uh, and, and make it tough on them to score. Any more questions for Coach Broadhead? Coach, thank you for your time. We'll see you Thursday. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I, I thought we had a great effort by our team today, and uh, uh, we did not play like a 12 seed, you know, by any means. And you know, for effort alone and, and uh, the energy that we played with, although I thought we got a little tired late, maybe, but. Uh, couldn't be more proud of our kids with, with, again, how hard they played. It's obviously been kind of a tough season and not what we wanted, of course, but um, great win on Saturday you know, against Texas State, obviously one of the top four teams. And had they won that game, they would have been the three seed. 
great effort there, great effort today. Um, you know, we got a ton of respect for Louisiana Lafayette and Gary Broadhead. They've done a great job, and, and um, he's got three outstanding players, obviously Jalen Gordon and Nakia Jones and uh, certainly Simone Fields. But um, like I said, happy with our effort. Uh, we gave ourselves a chance. You know, a lot of times with a coach, that's as much as what you're looking for to go into the fourth quarter with a five-point lead. Uh, like I said, certainly speaks volumes. I, tough start to the fourth quarter. Um, you know, I thought, again, I guess I'll be careful on how I word this, but Gabby Cortez was sitting there. She's taken about, I think, over 30 charges this year. Was waiting and waiting and waiting, um, and they called a block. And uh, so we were up five at the point, at that point, and they call a block. So the kid goes and knocks down two free throws, cuts it to three. Now it's not the official's fault that we turned it over right away, but because they, sh they, because they had made free throws, obviously that allows them to set up their press. We turn it over, they get an and one. So in a matter of seconds, the lead is gone. And, uh, but you know, so that's a big momentum play. If, it, if it's called a charge, um, you know, obviously, like I said, a kid who's taken 30 plus charges over the year, then it's our ball, foul on Lafayette, and, and we're still up five. But so, but it is what it is. Um, but nonetheless, I, I was proud of our kids' the resiliency that they continued to show, even when the lead slipped away, they, they kept battling back. Questions for Coach Dow? Coach, it seemed kind of like a microcosm of your whole season. You're right there for three quarters and then a couple minutes in the fourth. Uh, slowed you down and then uh, giving up all those offensive rebounds didn't help either. Yeah, that didn't. And, uh, you know, that's something we – was a big point of emphasis coming into this game is, is you know, the two times that they beat us, there was a huge disparity in O boards, uh, which means there was a huge disparity in the number of shot attempts they got versus what we had. And once again, you know, they had 10 more shots than we did. Obviously, they had 10 more old boards, uh, plus we had three more turnovers. But, um, and, and that's just it, is at times we did everything right defensively, but part of good defense is finishing the possession. And we didn't always have a physical block out, or maybe some balls were in our hands, we didn't wrap up. Um, you know, one of the stats that's always a killer, and our, my team hears me talk about this periodically, is team. Uh, team offensive rebounds. We gave up a couple to them. It felt like I think in the second half, and, and you know, but um, but again, Simone Fields, you know, she earned a lot of those 10-0 boards as well. But uh, like I said, there was there was a lot of times we did everything right, just didn't finish the possession. And uh, Alexis had 14 in the third. Is there anything you talked about at halftime, or that just she was more aggressive? Yeah, aggressive, yeah. And that's the thing. Sometimes Alexis. Um, I, I, listen, I say this with the utmost respect for Jalen Gordon because I think she's an outstanding player and well-deserving being first-team all-conference. And on most nights, I think she's the best guard in the league. Tonight, Alexis Collins was the best guard on the floor. And uh, I think Jalen and Coach Broadhead might even agree with that. Uh, but, you know, sometimes Alexis can be her own worst enemy and doesn't always attack. And, you know, we kept, we've been trying to encourage her all season long. She's got a great little hesitation dribble. She knows how to change speeds. You know, quick, clearly she's got a burst and can finish. Um, you know, that was a tough ask. And, you know, for her to play 40 minutes tonight, pretty intense game. Um, you know, comes away with six assists, eight rebounds, obviously 24 points. A little out of character for her. You know, to only go seven of 13 from the free throw line. But, um, but we felt like, you know, they were trying to switch on some on balls. Which you know, we try to tell our guards that means a post player is switching on to you, and it's kind of an insult. You know, you've got to be able to, to have the confidence and, and be aggressive enough to try to get to the rim and blow by them. And Alexa certainly took that to heart today. Daryl, you have a question? Yeah, I just want to ask here. about uh, their stopping Alexis in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, I, I don't know how much they stopped her, or you know. Probably a combination of things, but slowed her, maybe. slowed her down a little bit, <laughs> yeah. I guess. And like I said, she she missed some free throws. I don't remember what the final numbers were, but um, you know, and again, some of it might have been fatigue. You know, she was, you know, she's having to work hard on both ends, and and, and at times, um, because of the up tempo and because of all the pressing, I should say that they were doing, you know, that's going to accelerate the, the pace of the game and maybe play at a little bit faster pace than what we're normally accustomed to, and. 
you know, we don't always ask Alexis to play 40 minutes, but, you know, she needed to. She did it on Saturday for us as well. She did it, um, you know, but yeah, still goes 8 of 18 from the field and only had five turnovers. But I thought that was another big thing for our, our team as a whole. We only had three turnovers in the first half. And uh, I, I can assure you that was a record for this season. That was a record-setting half for the Warhawks, uh, only turning it over three times. But then we turned it over eight times, you know, in the second half. And some of those turnovers, I, I alluded to the end one that they got early in the fourth quarter. Some of those turnovers led to easy points. Uh, I don't see the final stat on here on points off turnovers. I don't know if we have that anywhere. Um, normally, that's on the stat sheet. Yeah. But, um, but I would imagine, um, I would guess that that probably ended up being to the advantage of uh, Louisiana Lafayette.